uh, Van Gogh, along with the other French Impressionists, really went outside to look at the nature, and they were like, didn't really like the the studio constructs because they had kind of rules and formulas. And one of the classic rules that's still um, taught today is that cool colors go back and warm colors come forward. So we, we all know that when we're out in the desert and we see the mountains that are 30 or 40 uh, miles away and those little mountain peaks in the distance have a blue tint. We can see that they're blue, but we know that in real life they're not necessarily blue. Um, but in distance, as you go back, one of the devices is that you make things more cool, make them more blue, and they go back in the distance. And that was a rigid rule. It's a rigid rule. Warm colors come forward, blue, uh, cool colors go back. And Van Gogh's like, but what happens when you have a sunset? <laughs> and I see all those warm colors back there. What happens? Do I make them blue? And then what happens to the sunset? So how does that work? And so by being outside and observing very carefully, Van Gogh was making inroads into color theory and, and trying to place colors and being true to things that he was seeing and also looking at things that were normally difficult. So maybe a, a classical painter said, well, I'm not going to do that thing because the warm colors are behind. So I don't know how to do it because I'm going to keep making them cold and then it doesn't work anymore. But Van Gogh like, yeah, let's take it on. Let's go do this. So like in this piece, we have the sun, sun literally um, either rising or setting. It was a sower, so it's probably rising. And uh, we have uh, the golden sky. We have a golden field, and both of those things are in the background. So we've got the sun, the gold sky, and gold field that are all in the distance. And then what he has coming forward are the, the sower, who's in cool colors, and we have the little reflections of light on, on um, leftover weeds and things like that that are all getting the blues. So he's pulling the blues forward, and he's setting the warm colors back. It's fairly radical, and it's a, a tweak. It's saying it doesn't. We can break those rules, and we can set up some new ones. He's observing it, so he's like, "What am I actually seeing out here?" Then he's figuring out the theory. Oh, it's moving. It's warm. What happens if I reverse this thing and make those warm colors go back and mm -hmm. make reverse and cool colors? And then, like in this particular piece. In that theory, he doesn't completely do it because he does have a little bit of a village and a building that tend to take on that blue, and those things are in the far distance. But he's, he's experimenting and trying it out. So he's seeing real things, and he's trying to juggle it around and see it. And at the same time, when we look at the painting, we can ask ourselves, does it feel alive? So it's a little different question than if it's, does it, is, does it look real? So. That's also one of the debates is, do you create like the Delacroix, energy and vitality and life, or do you make it pit finished and polished and still? And a lot of, uh, mostly with, with artists, they all know what it uh, means to over polish, is you, you, you end up killing the energy of the work. So we all know that it, that's a, a risk. So when we look at the Van Gogh, we can say, is it alive? Not does it look real? 